Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today with Quilters Newsletter's creative editor, Lori Baker. Hello, Lori. Hi. Lori and I are standing here in front of a beautiful quilt that we um, are including in our Best Christmas Quilts 2014 special issue on newsstands. This is by a woman named Marsha Harmoning, and it's called Nordic Crystals. And it's really just gorgeous. I remember when we got the submission for it, we were like, okay, and obviously we will be, we will be including this <laughs> yes. in our magazine because it's, it's just beautiful. And today Lori is going to show us how to do by machine what Marsha mostly did by hand. And I really love the look of hand applique, hand quilting. I think they're wonderful. I'm just not patient enough to do them. It's just not what so, you do these days. No, I, I just don't do that. So when I see something like this that I really want to duplicate, I start thinking, okay, can I do that by machine? Mm -hmm. um, and this is possible. This yes. is very possible. Well, it'll look different because you can see the stitches when you do machine applique. Mm -hmm. They're not terribly noticeable, but... You have to really look to find Marcia's you really stitching do. on Occasionally this. Occasionally you can, you can see a couple of the stitches, but you know the goal with, with hand applique is to hide those exactly. stitches. Um, and she did a fantastic job of that. So let's talk about then how you are able to replicate this look. Okay, let's do. With machine. So I started out with a beginning version of what is in the magazine. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't quite the finished version. What the readers get is even better than this. Yes. It'll have some tick marks on it, and things like that. Um, but this is what I started with. Um, it's a full quarter plus a little bit of each design. Mm -hmm. So I simply went to my copy machine and I made a copy of this. And then because the freezer paper that I'm going to be using is eight and a half by 11 sheets, I wanted a quarter of this to fit on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. Okay. So I cut out enough of these to fit them on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. That's a half of a pattern and I'm going to have an extra circle when I get done, but it's okay. I right. can throw away a half yes. a circle. Once I have this all scotch taped into position mm -hmm. on my eight and a half by 11 paper, I photocopy enough for the entire quilt. So then I have... So it looks like this. That's the this, photocopy of that. That's a okay. photocopy. And then I take this to the heavy-duty freezer paper, which is wonderful. Okay, I've never used... I've never used this type of product before. Um, the stuff that's specifically manufactured for quilters. I've used the grocery store right. freezer and, paper. Right, and the grocery store freezer paper works Okay, but this is nicer. Okay. I like this. It's just a little thicker, mm -hmm. a little easier to handle. Yeah, it does real... come in eight and a half by 11 sheets, which is why I used that format when I started making my patterns. And once I have this, I'm just going to tape one of my photocopies onto it. So here's what I've got to begin with, my photocopy taped onto a piece of the freezer and paper. And now you taped it to the blunt or the matte side that you can draw on. Correct. You'll Correct. see there are two sides to the freezer paper and this is the shiny side. You can sort of see that and then there. And the shiny side is the side that will adhere to your fabric. Mm -hmm. So you want that where you can get to it when it's time to start pressing. Yes. So then, again, I don't like to spend a lot of time so I just carefully hold this in position and cut. So you just taped it a little bit around mm -hmm. the edges. Mm -hmm. just. And I, I cut the outside curve with a longer blade scissors, and these are actually paper scissors, just plain old office scissors. But when I get to the inside of this little football shape, I need a point. So I was really bad, and I got my sewing scissors with a sharp point, and I just make a point, a hole there, 
and then I can cut out that inside. Okay, so you didn't cut the whole thing, it was just to get Just showing. enough to get started, but it is my sewing scissors, so I don't let any of the family see me when I do that. Well, because then they might think that it's okay for them to do that, exactly. and that's not acceptable. And that's not appropriate. No, no, we've all had that conversation, haven't we? We have, we have. So then, I have my, my shapes all cut it's out, next. and it's time to press them uh -huh. onto our fabric. I cut my fabric in strips nine inches wide because my piece of paper is eight and a half. So, um, so you know it's it gonna just, fit. just is easier to yeah. handle that way. The shiny side goes down, and I need three sixteenths of an inch on the side of each pattern. So I make sure that when I lay my pattern down, I've got about a half an inch between the one that I'm placing and the ones that are already mm -hmm. in position. You should, if you can just eyeball that half inch, you'll, yeah, be, you'll exactly. be fine. It does take a little tiny bit longer pressing to oh, get this yeah, to see. adhere uh, than it does with regular freezer paper. Well, because like you noted, the, fa the, the paper it's itself thicker. is thicker. So. Yeah. Okay, but not much longer. Not much longer. And once we get those on, then we take our good fabric yes. scissors and we cut out. And like I said, we're going to use about 3 sixteenths of an inch. That's less than a quarter of an inch, more than an eighth of an inch. And I eyeball it. So a real scant quarter inch. Yes, real scant. This is a good project for when you're sitting and watching TV because you've got lots of little shapes sure to cut do. out. All those little teardrop shapes. All those teardrops, all that stuff. And although you're eyeballing it, you still want to be careful. That's right. Because too much will get in your way, too little, and you've wasted Correct. that piece of fabric and that shape Correct. possibly. Correct. Although, how, how easy is it to reuse these freezer paper templates? I I did try that and I didn't like it because when we get to the part where we're putting starch on, they, they kind of warp a little okay. bit. And I just so felt just like one use, one use okay. was good. So do you want this one next? I do. Okay. So now we've got our shape all cut out. I do cut a little slit down here that goes to this point so that it's easier to turn. Let's talk about the right side and the wrong side of the fabric. Real quick. Yes, I didn't mention that. We want our templates pressed to the wrong side of the fabric on what we're using. It didn't matter because right. you wouldn't be able to tell. But you want it on the wrong side of the fabric because when we get ready to turn our shapes, we're going to want to turn over this cardboard template to the back. Yes. And here's the part that's really fun. Yes. We're going to mix together, and, and this is not rocket science. I eyeball this too. This is not Breaking Bad. I did, that's exactly right. <laughs> I've got concentrated starch, and I take my little lid, and I pour it about half full. Okay. Then I add the other half of water, and I've got about a half and half Oop. mixture. Ooh, that was really full. And how long does this last? How many shapes are you going to be able to get out We're of it? We're going to refill several times. Are you? Okay. And then I just use a cotton swab or, or a clean makeup brush and just manipulate that over the edge. Okay, so you don't paint the inside first. You just go straight for that, mm -hmm. what is the right side of the fabric. Right. The right side of the turn under allowance and just start pushing it into place. Right. Got it. And once I get that all in place, and I do just one side at a time. So, so if I were doing this whole shape, I would get just this much down and then I'd press it. Oh. Then I'd turn it around and I'd do just this much and I'd press it. It just, that's how it seems to work best for me. Once I get this all laying down nicely, and I do pay special attention down here at these points, that's the hardest part to have look yes. nice. So this is not necessarily watching TV. No, this no. Is you want to pay attention, attention yeah. when you're doing this yeah. one. 
And again, we're just going to press that. Sizzle, sizzle. Sizzle, sizzle. My iron is nice and hot. And once I get all four sides, I'm done with this shape. Mm -hmm. And this is what he looks like then. He, I've got it all pressed. I'm going to take my paper shape out. And then repress. And that's just a, a final make sure everything sure. stayed where it needs to be. Because there's a lot of bias happening. Right, exactly. Nice. So nice that's ready. Flat. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's ready to pin on our background. And you've got a few things going on here. Yes, I do. Put this for me here. I took my paper pattern and I put it on a light box. If you don't have a light box, you can use your patio door. Yes. I took my background fabric and I ironed it so I could find all eight segments, it's in, ironed in quarters and then again, so it's in eights. Mm -hmm. And then I matched to each of these little points here. Which in the pattern that comes um, in the magazine, we have those cross hatch Correct. marks, the, the vertical, horizontal, and diagonal Correct. marks that you could line up with your um, press marks on your fabric. Right. This is, as we said, this is an earlier version of the artwork. Right. So then once I get those in place and I pin them fairly frequently because yeah. as we said there's a lot of bias going on here and they'd be glad to move if we let them so and also the the design I mean this design is so simple that anything that's off oh, is going to read so you do noticeable. want to be careful yeah just take your exactly. time with this and then uh, the thing that I like to do when I'm ready to actually sew mm -hmm. is I use a double layer of stabilizer on this particular one because it's a washable quilt, I used a washable stabilizer. Uh -huh. And I've got two layers of that. My background fabric was starched fairly heavily yeah. um, because we've got a stitch with width. And when we're doing that, if we don't have the fabric and the stabilizer in place, it might pucker. Okay. And then we're ready to sew. Okay. I have my machine set for a blanket stitch or a pin stitch, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. It's a two steps forward and then a step to the side and then back to center. The only thing I want you to remember when you're doing a pin stitch around a curve is that you want to move your fabric to account for that curve only on the forward steps, not okay. on the side movement. Okay. I, in order to get my needle in the right place so it's just off the edge of the fabric, I use the hand wheel and roll it down, and then I can position it exactly where I want it, and I'm ready to sew. This is a place that I go fairly slowly because mm -hmm. I want those forward stitches just barely off the edge of the fabric. So again, a place where careful attention, because although, as we said, using um, a white thread on a white applique shape or, you know, using a matching thread, you will still see the stitches, right. and you, but you want them to um, overlap onto your background fabric as little as possible. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then we're, that's all you have to do is just... Then you just have to sew it. Go around. <laughs> finish going around all the way. Is there an order that you recommend? Do you do the big shapes first and then fill in with the little ones? I do, ones? yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the easiest way because if it, you're getting more stability each time you get a shape built onto mm -hmm. it, stitched onto it. So better to do the so big this ones is, first. This isn't just for the sake of demonstration. This is also how you would do it. It's, uh -huh, it's yes. just lay down your, a few of your big shapes so you get the spacing put those down, then layer on more shapes. Correct. Great. Correct. Great. Thank you so much. Um, this is a, it's, there are a lot of steps to this technique, but as we saw with the original quilt, I mean, it's, that's an heirloom quality It piece. is. It's stunning. It's something that you would enjoy in your home every season or all year round. Yeah. And so it's, it's time well spent, I think. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lori.
Thanks for joining us. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.